They were the stories that have charmed an entire generation. From the books to the television series, people around the world have grown up with the railway stories. But the truth behind Thomas and his friends is no children's story. It's a story that begins in wartime Germany and ends with a discovery that would change Thomas and his friends' lives forever. Hello there, internet dwellers. Welcome back to another video. Today we're reacting to a Thomas the Tank Engine horror animation. Yes, you heard that correctly, a Thomas the Tank Engine horror animation. Now at first glance you'd think, oh wow, this isn't going to be scary at all. But in my personal experience, usually the things that are the scariest are the things that disguise themselves as innocent and the more you dive deeper into it, the more the rug gets pulled under your feet. It's called Shed 17 and it's by Paul's Vids. So I'm looking forward to this. It, apparently it takes place in wartime Germany. So that should be an interesting take for sure. If you do enjoy this video, be sure to go check out Paul's vids. Go like the video yourself. Go subscribe, all that good stuff. Go show all the support you can. And if you enjoy my reaction, why not leave a like rating, subscribe, all that good stuff. Without further ado, we're just going to jump straight in. So apparently the original, which was uploaded eight years ago, had like five million views or something like that. Or maybe more than that. Apparently it had copyrightable music, so they had to uh, remaster it. And this was only remastered three years ago, so... Pulls vids, here we go. Ugh. Shall I put captions on? Is it going to be a... Oh, it's auto-generated. Sodor Island, 1982. Is that how you say that? Sodor? I'm thinking Hodor. Hodor! Sodor! Ooh, I like that. This was actually recommended to me by T.W. Burgess. Uh, you guys might know him. He wrote Mr. Howell, the graphic novel. Is it a graphic novel? I believe it's a graphic novel. It's like a found footage graphic novel. Really good. Um, so, and I, I know that they've got a good taste in horror. So I'm definitely giving this a shot. Anyway, I'll stop rambling. It's showing the difference between then and now, I'm assuming. Those train tracks have seen better days. Wow. Okay. Woo! So nice. Is that is that actually Thomas? Like rusted up? They were the stories that have charmed an entire generation. Yeah. From the books to the television series, people around the world have grown up with the railway stories. Yeah. And all their when I was a kid. Characters. But the truth behind Thomas and his friends was no children's fantasy. The truth would be horrifying. Oh dear. Okay, Shed 17. Here we go. You know, there's a there's a big community for Thomas the Tank Engine horror i found a lot of people seem to love it 45 oh. the remote island of sodor off the northwest coast sodor. of england has emerged from the fog of world war ii relatively unscathed and untouched lovely the island served as a detention camp for germans living in england keith hartley that's how professor came to be here Professor Wilhelm Goethe was born in 1903 in Munich, Germany. Right. A doctor in biology, he became a prominent advisor to the ruling party in the 30s. Good Lord. This is great music, YouTube. Good Lord. Gonna get demonetized. As war escalated, he, his wife Olga, and four year old son Hans fled the country. Hans? Holy crap. The World at War, 1973. As I resided in the lower ranks of the party, I was increasingly abhorred by the direction my government had taken. The things they were rumored to be doing terrified me. That's what he wanted people to believe. That's what he wanted people to believe. I love this accent. Experiments were hard to stomach even for his own people. Yeah, in truth, okay. he had become a prominent figure in the government. But as his work progressed... Oh, good lord. You silly goose. 
questions and objections had been raised in the higher echelons of the Reich. Come on, they can't, they can't have all been miserable questions like this. Objections oh, there have got to be some happy Nazis out there. <laughs> okay, let's the right. stop. Stop. His work with genetics and DNA was truly pioneering. Yeah. The cracking and manipulating of the human genome. What Professor... Manipulate... See, I've heard about... Like... Okay, never mind. Was successful in, however, was keeping his history a secret until his death. In an attempt to gain okay. favor among the German hierarchy, Wilhelm Goethe was at the forefront of the government's most fanatical policies. In 1938, he was influential in instigating the infamous Sajmelnacht, the Night of Sawdust. Uh oh. But okay, sorry guys, I actually accidentally stopped recording my um, the audio. Experiments advanced. So this is like alternate history told through Thomas the Tank Engine. He became a much less popular figure and soon feared for his and his family's lives. As soon as he escaped to England, he was banged up here. But locals were nice to him. There was no hostility. Mm -hmm. And many of them chose to live here after the war. Following their release, Professor Goethe, Olga and young Hans chose to remain. After studying under his father... So a little Harry Potter Hans there. Hans left at the age of 18 and went mm. to university on the mainland, studying biology and engineering. Very Writing nice. several pioneering papers about genetics and the splicing of DNA with mechanical implants. Interesting. Okay, so that's cyberpunk. He called it biofusion. Biofusion. The technique of manipulating genetic material to splice with mechanical attachments. However, much like his father, the British government became more and more concerned with Hans Goetz's proposals. So he was forced to seek financial backing from home. His dad left Germany with quite a few bob, so Hans came back. He mm. saw our little island as some sort of refuge where he could work in peace. Soon every nutcase and eccentric was coming over. By 1962, Hans had set up Sodor Research. Interesting. A small lab near the town of Arlesborough. But soon the enterprise began supplying medical equipment and machinery and quickly grew to become a large complex, comprising its own links to the growing Sodor rail system. Okay. Young Abby Collins from the town was working there when Professor Hans took a liking to her. Soon they were married, and not long after, the town was buzzing with news of her pregnancy. Interesting. Baby Thomas so now Hans oh. was born in 1968. Thomas! It, oh my god, look at that face! Jeez. Throughout the early years of his life, he would watch the growing railway network with fascination. He couldn't get enough of trains. His dad bought him one of the first video cameras, and he'd be on the Ooh, okay. platforms every day. You can see me in some of those tapes. Hey, Mr. Hartley. Morning, Thomas. <laughs> he was friends with everyone. Even that simple. This is really well done. Who could only say where he lived? So <laughs> But his favourite trains were the old steam engines. Okay, wow. Okay. Steam engines were a dying art on the British mainland. But Hans also had a fondness for them, much like his son, and likes to keep them running for our purposes, taking orders from the labs to the growing docks, or to the mainland to be transferred to a modern... Okay, so from Sodor was like a research facility thing, and they'd use the railway tracks to what it's like research and development so they would like use the trains to transit between the island and the mainland of england and that's why there's like a big train system here express trains but as the sodor rail system expanded it found itself increasingly under the supervision of the new british rail network uh -oh. and appointed a new controller Born into money, he took his ridiculous Sir Toppen hat. Give us name to hat and started wearing a top hat all the time. The fat conductor. Of course, the islanders had a different name for him. Fat bastard. <laughs> okay, all that. You've never met such a cold-hearted. <laughs> he found old steam engine volunteers and cut most of rail employees. This is so well made. Holy crap! Shut down the branch line and the smaller stations. He was happy to let the railway rust away, just like okay. they did to mainline. To mainline. The of the railway were about to take a profitable turn, a stroke of luck for the island that would result from tragedy. Uh-oh. 
Come on, we're gonna be late. What's the time? Thomas, get moving. Young Thomas loved following railway. He'd be out all the time, hoping to catch a new train on his camera. Uh huh. 11.45's coming for you soon. He won't wait for us. Jeez, it's like one of those freaking like reels where the guy just continuously walking, but he keeps resetting every time the camera turns back to him. Unfortunately, he didn't take as much notice of the safety signs. Oh, Thomas. Have we missed it yet? Wait for the 11.45. Surely you would, I mean, they weren't that fast back then, were they? The trains? You'd hear it coming, at least. Thomas, come on. It's always held up. Whoa! I mean, they weren't that fast back then, were they? The trains? There ain't no way it was that quick. Oh, good God. Hans was mortified. He disappeared from public view. Hey driver, where where's we going? I swear my nerves are showing. Set my hopes up way too high. Living's in the way we die. Comes the morning and the headlights fade in rain. What is this? And into the labs. Locking himself in, he wouldn't allow anyone in there. Eventually his father Wilhelm came to see him. In a few days, a major laboratory had been locked down, followed mm. by an engine maintenance shed, which was to become off limits to all. Shed 17. Oh, is this gonna? This is okay. I see where this is going. Hans, or whatever his name was, was it Hans or his dad as well? Were working on fusing DNA with mechanical parts, like biomechanical mechanical stuff. So they're gonna fuse Thomas into a train, making Thomas the tank engine. Production was shut down. Orders weren't met, but the two Professor Goodsers didn't care. More and more equipment was being delivered daily. But no one was allowed in Shed 17. What was Russian going on? started being asked on Sodor. Where were the Goetzes? Would there be no funeral for young Thomas? And where was the body? Good Lord. He arranged for Thomas to be transferred to a mainland hospital. He'd been taken to the complex but was never moved by rail. We all assumed the obvious. He was still in lab. But still in lab? Thomas was there. Was he still alive? And what was the purpose of keeping him at the complex? Almost a year after the accident, the doors of Sodor Research were reopened. In an open okay. invitation to the people of oh, the island, Oh, good lord. Thomas rolled out of Shed 17. Oh my god, they, they fused Thomas. It took me a moment to realise what it was I was looking at. When he looked at me and said, Hiya, Mr Hartley. It dawned on me what Hans Goetzer and his dad had done. That's crazy. One woman passed out as Thomas smiled at us. Okay, so Hans, yeah. I had to run off around the side of the shed. Hey, are you all right, Keith? <laughs> He's throwing up violently. The news spread across the country. The world's media rushed to Sodor Island. ITN. They kept trying to wow. interview me. I became a bit of a celebrity. News at 10. Nowadays, it's just news 24-7. Controversy on Sodor Island. Controversy. Questions asked about science ethics. It's fair to say I was pretty nervous at times. I'm joined now by Keith Hartley. But I think I put on a brave face. <laughs> what did you think when you first came to meet Thomas the Tank Engine? <laughs> <laughs> That's very South Park. My god, these old school freaking like ITV. Most of my mates said I looked pretty good on telly. Not throwing up. The mayor said I'd represented the people of Sodor very well. It's important to show you're confident when people are asking you awkward questions. Mm hmm. Good evening. An act of mercy or a crime against humanity. What is this? Even when some of the questions got difficult, I made sure I knew what I was talking about. What was your reaction when you first met a talking tank engine? <laughs> if you can't make an informed opinion, or if you can't string together two words on telly, well, maybe you shouldn't be on there. Yep. Admittedly, the subject matter was a bit bizarre sometimes. There are some dark forces at work here. 
<laughs> who's who's getting this guy on television? Stop getting this man on television. He's throwing up everywhere. Win over the audience. See this, they're laughing at you. They're not laughing with you. <laughs> Good God. Yes, the family refused to answer any questions. Behind closed doors, the only question they agreed to answer had been asked repeatedly. Would Thomas work on the railway? The response was an emphatic no. Thomas's DNA had been reprogrammed to accept and adapt to the engine structure, oh using the engine's internal system to maintain his organic functions. What no one could be sure of was how much of the engine was mechanical and how much was organic material. It's like uh, Jack G animations. Around without Project coaches, Britannica. But to work on the railway, his engine would need to be fired up and operated by a driver and fireman. Oh, Since no one could be sure how much of the engine vo they're, they're shoveling into his ass. Was Thomas, the pressure Ooh. caused by the engine could rupture his organs from the inside, mm. and the incredible heat could boil him alive. Wow. Professor Hans and his father vowed Thomas would never work on the railways. Similarly, the two professors were to refuse many requests by people from around the world who wished to be biofused into engines. They were billionaires offering to pay. That's freaking, what's his name? Keith Richards or whatever his name is. Not Keith Richards. Richard, whatever his name is. Dude who owns Virgin it's Media. To be converted into an engine or some other transport. Train enthusiasts too. And people with terminal illnesses were desperate to be made into trains. But for some reason, the Kurtzers refused. But there would be other interested parties eager to seize on the biofusion gold mine. The independently wealthy Topham Hatt staged a hostile takeover and within weeks had bought a controlling share in Sodor research. Hmm. Immediately, the policy of the company changed and so did the ethics. The medical supply wing was shut down and work began on mass biofusion experiments and Good operations. Lord! Anyone who could afford it, some handing over their whole fortunes, were turned into engines. But... Along with the new policy, there would be worse to come. Biofused engines would be allowed, then obliged to work on the railways. Oh God! The first one we fired up. It's like slavery. Trains. He didn't have the money some of these people had, and so agreed to basically sign his life away if they wanted to experiment further. Good or to Lord! Take risks like this. As usual, the fat f had everything recorded. All kept classified. You understand? These recordings, shown for the first time. Reveal the extent of Look at that face! Experiments. It was horrible watching these engines work on the railways some days. But the tourists wanted to see it. They expected it. And for me, it was work. But He's gonna blow! the engine's increasing work schedule came more and more accidents. Edward was first to have problems. He'd been filming all day for the new TV series they'd announced. Oh, Thomas the Tank scene, Engine. He had to pull into Wellsworth Station and whistle to the kids on the platform. Peep, peep. Whistled Edward. Thank you very much. Oh my God! This was only the first in an increasing number of incidents. Good Lord! Session with aircraft and appears to become a helicopter. The operation had gone well. But we had to ban him from being allowed to attempt flight. In an experiment kept secret until now, Mavis the diesel engine was to be the first biofused locomotive used on the railway. We fueled her up and everything seemed fine. Oh my god. Things got out of hand. The diesel began to burn her internal organs. Everything organic in the engine was soon burning. Look at that! Have you ever heard a locomotive scream in pain? No. We tried rinsing out the fuel tank with water. Oh my god, we that's horrific. That is so... Oh! Kept on. Looks like one of those freaking little cookies with the smiley faces. The lock and key indefinitely. In an unexpected U-turn, Sir Topham Hatt would ban fueled engines from being used on the island. Harold was okay. never told... So no fuel engines. That was the first diesel, but they can still use coal? Told by he couldn't fly, but the decision would keep him alive. If only for a little while longer. Oh In God! In fact, unknown to the outside world, there had been many failed biofusion experiments. That fat b kept the accidents a secret, and legal disclaimers had to be signed by anyone being biofused. 
So there'd be no legal action taken if anything went wrong. This footage shows engines being displayed to tourists during the off season. Many of these Toby has seen things, man. Fusion experiments and were too ill to work. Bertie were already dead. They had to put a stop to that, though. What the hell happened? Everyone started asking the same thing. Why had Thomas the first engine? Oh my god. Despite all that's obviously Thomas works well because his dad, who's the freaking obviously the the absolute professional genius, is keeping him alive. The troubles the other engines had. Thomas had worked fine, seemingly oblivious to the other engines' problems and accidents. Keeping their problems a secret from the outside world, Sodor Research began selling the technology to other countries. Oh, that the, is just a terrible idea. Million pound deals. These countries would have less qualms about the use of fuel engines and even the modern electric trains. Even failed biofused engines were being displayed publicly in what would become a kind of freak show. A freak show? Oh, double-ended. Professor, Professor Hans Gertzer, it's like freaking the human centipede, but it's the human tra the train. I don't shut so up. So what this was leading to, slavery of engines, and Good immediately God. resigned. His father, Wilhelm, would go one step further. One step further. <laughs> There's no way you, you have a framed photograph of you with Adolf Hitler. Is that a Hitler there? That is, that is abominable. Oh, what the hell? Oh. What do you call those guns? I forgot what you call them. Uh, there's a. Uh. He's gonna shoot himself in the head. Oh my god, he decorated the walls with his brains! Professor Wilhelm couldn't come to terms with what was happening to his engines and took the only course he thought he could take. The hell's that? Has he got like a that flame? Got a load of us rail staff over to his house to clean up after the body was taken away. Jeez. You should have seen it. Sawdust everywhere. It Sawdust? Oh, okay, because they're, they're not real humans. <laughs> that is so stupid. But such attempts to keep the... But why is there blood in the trains? Incidents on Sodor Secret were short-lived after a very public accident. Gordon paid an enormous amount to be Sodor's first 462 configuration engine. Much bigger than any other engine at the time. Mm -hmm. We were terrified that fat shit would make us fire up that huge engine. We were shocked to discover he had insisted on being able to work on the railway. Hmm. So, one night, after the regular staff had finished for the day, fat <laughs> some of the real staff... I love how they, they all unanimously just call him that. Like, he doesn't have a name, that is his name. And I fired up the engine. As usual, these experiments were filmed. This footage has never been broadcast before. Dr. Ruth and I filmed it all. It might be a bit shaky. It was handheld. At first... Gordon complained about the heat, and then that turned to pleas to douse the fire. But the okay. fat bastard held us back. He wanted to see what would happen. What? Yeah, dude, he had put a lot of work into Gordon, and the chances to get him working were too great an opportunity. He was literally cooking from the inside. Oh the my god. Out, it was too late. Ah! Good lord! I God, he is a fat bastard! Some of them. All I could do was run. I was lucky to get away with some singed clothes. Others weren't so lucky. The fateful few hours following the accident wow. would seal the fate of Sodor Research. Oh my goodness. The fat stopped us trying to put out the fire. 
insisting that any evidence would fall back on us. He kept wow. repeating. Wow. And that is a guy who does not give a crap about life at it all. It was all your fault. You knew the dangers. You're legally to blame. He stopped us calling for ambulances or the fire brigade. Wow. We told him, these are injured people here. They're going to die unless we do something. But he kept saying, no one from the outside can come in. No. Okay, it was just Hitler reincarnated. Oh my God. can see this. Finally, someone suggested we airlift them to hospital. Harold was banned from flying for his own safety, but we thought the risk was worth it. Fueling Harold was a nervous experience. Would he have the same reaction Mavis had? We all breathed a sigh of relief and loaded the injured people aboard. Then it all went wrong. Oh, God. Ah! <laughs> okay. They could not catch a break. The engine had worked fine, but what no one realized was most of Harold's lower extremities were permanently fused to his propeller system. Okay. As Harold's rotor blades began to spin, vital organs would be drawn into the motor and tear him apart from the inside. Oh, because they, okay, so they tried, they didn't let him fly to begin with. What a miserable existence that would have been. The guy said, oh, can you biofuse me with a helicopter? They say, sure, we can do that. So they say, you're not allowed to fly, so you're just stuck here. That's, what is that? What kind of life is that? Give me this death. That That's what I'm no, asking for. No, there was no covering it up. The smoke could be seen all morning, but news people were here in an instant. What, why couldn't they see the smoke or the explosion of the the other one? The Roger one? We were told one. to close gates and start clearing up the mess ourselves, with some help. Henry Thierry was the only 420 gauge engine on the island. A large engine that had been working on the railway regularly, he had become popular among tourists and the locals. Henry was called into the yard to help tidy the mess. Working mostly at night, he would cart away the wreckage under cover of darkness. Right. To work quickly and quietly, Henry would cart wreckage from the yard away to the sea. Then one wow. night, the points were set wrong, and we were diverted to another shed. Henry. Oh dear, shed 17. Sent to shed number 17. Uh oh. Thomas had been biofused into a reconstruction. I love that. That's great. And had subsequently been declared out of bounds. It was dark, and these sheds all looked the same. I unlocked the doors, and Henry rolled in. I didn't see what Henry saw, because as soon as he put his head through doors, he bolted and reversed out. Oh dear, what's in there? Keith locks the shed up without seeing what was inside. Is it Thomas? But Henry had seen it all. Oh we God. We even dare talk about that shed. More than our job's worth. But Henry had decided to speak up. Wasn't there like a really cursed, like, actual episode of Thomas the Tank Engine where a train gets bricked up? <laughs> okay, hang on. A train gets bricked up. Right, listen, pause. I didn't mean it like that bricked in sorry it got bricked in to a tunnel like that i remember seeing something like that it was really really weird that, that night he arrived at the railway controller's office i don't know what was said in there <laughs> but there were raised voices at times what an office a shouting match for 10 minutes then henry left back to the shed by pure chance he was sent back to the same shed as thomas that night which Only is one sentence he sealed both their fates. Henry only said one thing to him. What did Stay he say? Stay away from Shed 17. The okay. next day, the fat had had a new job for him. Uh-oh. World in action. The flying keeper route ran through the night, delivering fresh from the docks to the mainland. Crap. It's the highest altitude line in the country. That old line was treacherous at best. But when Henry was Damn. there, in the middle of winter, it was a death trap. Why? In 1970, fish had started being delivered by roads to the mainland. It was all like frozen? more cost-effective, and the line was declared redundant. Dangerous and unnecessary, it came as a shock to the islanders when it was reopened. Huh. That fat shit always hated Henry. He didn't like his cheerful manner. <laughs> and he clearly had other... <laughs> This is it. Choices when he They're like bricked human. in. 
pointed Henry away from the other engines. Wow, this, this, he really is a fat son of a bitch. How, like, and I don't mean in terms of just his body weight, but fat as in evil. Let's just say that. I don't know why th those words aren't related at all. Kipper but Run was a death sentence. On the night of Kipper February Run was death sentence. Henry had only been on the Kipper Run for a week. The following incident. The Flying Kipper and Henry the Green Engine would be made into a book and later recreated in the television series. This is the really? railwayman called the Flying Kipper. Can you believe they put it in a kid's story? It's okay, wow. Of course, that fat f***er changed quite a few of their facts. <laughs> Such they as? No, the points from the main line to a siding were frozen, and the home signal should have been set at danger, but snow had forced it down. As the train. Good lord, they're, they're literally gonna show like a train wreckage. The most treacherous part of the line. Unnoticed to Henry, his driver, and fireman, that the points had diverted them to the adjoining siding and right into the path of another train. Which is what, full of fuel, I imagine. Oh, good God! Jesus! Oh, Henry's dead. This is so good. This is actually Henry's really good. Fireman had jumped clear before the crash. <laughs> oh, yeah, I bet they did. <laughs> Alan Barry died from their injuries. Alan Barry? Slowly. That was the opposite of speed. A flash, sorry. Hints. He's not flash, he's the slow. slow. I don't know. Good balance. one, Ryan. By midday, the recovery operation was underway. It's so uniquely done as well, because it's not meant to be like really good graphics or whatever. This is meant to be in a land where these people exist. Mr. Topham Hatt had arrived. Cheer up, Henry. It wasn't your fault. Ice and snow caused the accident. Yeah, sure it did, you fat These bastard. These images from a train spotter's camera were taken the evening before and were successfully covered. Why? Okay, so he he killed off Henry because he knew something about Shed 17. This guy is so evil. The railway board for 10 years. There was a railway spike in points blocking them. Of course, that had disappeared by the time we got there. Shit. I'm sending you to crew a fine place for sick engines. Uh-oh. Crew? Crew. We all knew what that meant. What did it mean? I'll give you a new shape and a larger firebox. Crew board. A larger firebox? At the time, one of only two scrap metal yards in the UK capable of handling and recycling organic material as well as engine parts. Ah. You'll feel a different engine and won't need special coal anymore. Special coal? With those few words, it's sentence Henry to death. Damn, look at those de look at those dumbbells. Well, those are for giants, those are those dumbbells. Be nice. Yes, sir, said Henry doubtfully. Everyone knew we won't see him again. And everything was sewn up nice and neat for that fat f <laughs> Oh, that's so messed up! As news got out about Henry's accident, it didn't take long for Thomas to realise Henry had been disposed of because of what he knew. Shit! Now Thomas knows! I bet Henry's like, you son of a bitch! I mean, um, did I say Henry, Thomas? The next evening... Thomas had been put on his own for the night at Knapford Station. Uh-oh. As his driver and fireman left, under what was left of his own steam, he <laughs> set that? Up the Get off. research complex. He had a small amount of burning fuel in his firebox, but he was mostly moving under his own strength. Oh, interesting. It took Thomas three hours to get to the complex. The efforts to get there nearly killing him. Damn, Thomas. Thomas arrived at midnight. With no one around, he made his way to the shed where he was created. Ooh, shed 17. What he found was the answers to his questions. Uh oh. And many others. Since. Ah, oh, this is so well done. Cause it's like a document, a genuine documentary you'd see on like a serial killer or something. So the research had become producing biofuels vehicles. The world had asked, why had the first biofusion operation worked so well? But nearly every operation since had failed. Sadly, Thomas found the reasons inside.
what was it? What what are we seeing? Thomas had never he looks tiny compared to those doors. In the first operation, he hadn't even been second. Oh. What shed number 17 contained was evidence of several attempts to create a tank engine with Thomas's DNA. Oh my God. The, what is These had been early tests made by people with no experience of an experiment on this scale. Jesus, it's making me hungry for some reason. I don't know why. And unprepared, these procedures had used DNA from the human Thomas and had been as much the real Thomas as the tank engine the world had come to know and love. Damn. So what, it's like a clone almost? They, they failed Thomas experiments. The tank engine had been the Thomas we all knew as a boy. Part of the family the whole island's population had known and respected since Wilhelm first arrived. In actuality, this tank engine was no more the real Thomas than all the failed creations made Damn, over the they 12 were. months before. Wow. This Thomas had all the human Thomas's memories and experiences. But he wasn't he actually Thomas. What Thomas had learned, known who Thomas had known, but so had all the previous failures. Damn. And who did that hand? His dad? Wilhelm and Hans Goethe had had to learn through trial and error how to bring their Thomas back from the dead. Oh the my following God. experiments had not had the same work put into them, resulting in the freak engines and aircraft that had developed so many problems. On oh, so they were all Thomas. All of them were Thomas. Or were they not? Sodor Island and around. I thought other people wanted to fuse themselves Whoa. as well. In Shed 17, Thomas wouldn't discover who he was, but in fact, who he wasn't. Damn. So what's in there then? Oh God. Thomas is in there. Oh God. So now this is going to be a human with a train head. Oh! What is happening? Why is this happening? Oh my god! Oh, that is nasty! God, so what that they were cloning Thomas basically. Ew. Oh, that's so nasty. He had no idea he was only one of many clones. None of us did. But I guess as time passed, we stopped asking all the questions we had at first. So what happened to this, we Thomas? We glad our friend was back with us. He could work for us. He became our servant in a way. Someone who drew in the crowds. Helped create jobs. Was eager to work. Thomas always thought of us as his friends. Sadly, over time we came to think of him as just really useful. Damn. This is... Oh my god. So what happens to... What did the... I'm guessing the fat conductor will then like kill off that Thomas and replace him with another Thomas? In 1983, a government inquiry was launched into the events of Sodor Island and the labs of Sodor Research. Biofusion was banned the following year. Compulsory work for biofused engines was finally banned after the wind scale nuclear flask test of July what? July 1984. What's this test? Huh? 
Hang on, they were using these biofused things to freaking test crashes on. Was it just cheaper to do? I can't imagine it being cheaper to do it. So Top Ham, Top Ham hat disappeared without trace. His whereabouts were never discovered. He would now be 102 years old. Oh my God, he's definitely dead. Thomas, the tank engine remains in a specialist unit where he has currently undergone 23 reconstructive operations. He's like, he was in an eye, what do they call that? An iron lung for people who have a, I forgot what it was. Biofusion was later banned in Europe, although biofused engines are still required to work. Sadly, in China, biofusion is still compulsory for all political prisoners. Wait, so if you're a prisoner in China... You have to fuse yourself to a freaking end. That is crazy. I'm guessing it's lifers, like people who are in there for life, not just a person who's like robbed a fucking steak from a supermarket. That would be insane. Quinghai. Always on time, never complain. Much easier to discipline. Okay. That, that that's a flapjack screen. That was literally a flapjack starring Ab Abby Al, Daniel T, Paul H. Next week, Cockleshell Bay. In the aftermath of the Mr. Ship inquiry, we ask, how much did ITV know? Oh my god. <laughs> and where next for Robin? This is crazy. Like, this whole, like, universe of, like, this thing existing in another universe. And, like, have it having its own little dramas and, like, allegations That's and Rosie. stuff. Oh, oh, fucking foreign, fucking of Bay. What? Oh, my God. That was actually really, really good. Sam the Angel fucks. Research. Man, Paul H. That was phenomenal. That was really good. Oh, good lord. Concordia. That was the, the cruise ship, right? Has it got a face on it? <laughs> okay. Plot twist. Oh, God. That was really, really good. Like like I said, halfway through that, I was thinking to myself, I don't know if I'll be able to upload this because it genuinely feels like a documentary. Like, it's so different to what I... Well, it's not different, but very different to what I usually upload, but it's in the same vein. But I found myself so immersed in it that I was like, hang on, I'm not even reacting to this. I'm literally just watching this. That was really, really unique and really, really good. And I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, I'm not sure what Paul is doing nowadays because that was three years ago. Last video was 27, 27 years ago, two years ago. So I'm guessing they stopped making videos. And I love the, the whole kind of taking something like that and turning it into like a documentary and using it in a way where it uses footage of the actual show and like presents it in a way of like, oh, this was happening behind the scenes. Like it's very similar to those documentaries where it's like something you, you see like, you know, Jimmy Savile or whatever, some like really sinister profile. And you know, you see him like on TV and then you like get interviews in of people who knew him. It feels very, very authentic. And like it, it reads so well as a documentary. That was awesome. I really, really enjoyed that guys. Go check out Paul's vids. Obviously, they're not uploading anymore. But if you can go check out the original uh, Paul's Shed 17, this is the remastered one without copyright. So there is one that you guys can enjoy, which I'll link to you guys below that you can enjoy in its full. So there's no non-copyrightable music. It's its full thing. But there we go, guys. That was awesome. If you guys enjoyed my reaction, why not leave a like rating down below? Subscribe, all that good stuff. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, guys.